Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about digital amplifiers, also commonly known as AmpSims. On my blog and in forums and Facebook groups, I see a lot of people with AmpSim problems. They don't get a good tone from the AmpSim, and it basically always turns out to be some kind of issue with their signal chain. By signal chain, I mean the order and the settings of the plugins on the guitar track. So now I'm going to show you how to set up a correct amp sim signal in your digital audio workstation using only free plugins. Since an amp sim is a simulation of a real amp, we're going to mimic a physical signal chain. In essence, the same stomp boxes you would put on your pedal board and in the same order. We're going to need the following, a noise gate, an overdrive, an amp sim, and a cab simulator. We'll start by adding the noise gate, which will remove any hum or noise from the silent parts of your recordings. In the real world, we would use a stomp box like the omnipresent Boss NS2, you know, the white one. But here we can use any noise gate plugin. Since my guitar has humbuckers, I will set the threshold pretty low. If your guitar has single coils, you would probably want it a bit higher. Next, we'll add an overdrive stomp box. I'm using the TSE 808. The overdrive will amplify the guitar's output signal to get more out of the amp. We'll keep the drive setting at zero and let the amp handle distortion just like you would on your pedal board. After the overdrive comes the amp itself. I'm using Lecto, which is a really good free simulation of an old friend we've come to love and admire. The Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. A really classic amp for distorted metal tones. We'll set it to use the red channel and modern mode to get a contemporary metal tone and increase the quality to eight times oversampling for the best quality. The last essential component of the signal chain is the cab simulator. This is where most people have problems. Some amp sims have the cab sim built in, but if yours hasn't and you don't add one, your tone will be horrible. The cab sim uses something called convolution reverb, where it uses a special sound file called an impulse, created by playing sounds through a real cab with speakers. So by changing impulses, your tone will change in the same way it would if you changed cabs. I'm using a popular impulse made by a company called Catharsis, made with a Mesa cab recorded with an SM57 microphone. The cab has different settings for the right and left channels, so you could actually choose different cabs for left and right. By pressing this button in the middle, I will replicate the settings from left to right. Also built into the cab is a simple EQ that we will set to cut out frequencies lower than about 100 Hz to remove mud and to cut out frequencies higher than about 11 kHz to remove noise. Now we're all set and we can record our first guitar track. Both the plugins and Reaper itself are lean on your CPU, so there's no problem with monitoring in real time with the plugins active. There we go, a bit sloppy maybe, but now we have a decent tone. Not too bad considering we didn't fine tune anything with equalizers yet. This track is now basically a mono track, even though it's played through both channels. A simple trick to make your guitar sound fuller and wider, and to make some space for other instruments in the middle of the mix, is to record a second take, and then to pan the two takes hard right and hard left. You want the second take to be as similar to the first one as possible, but you can't just copy the first track. You want the subtle differences of two different takes to even out any mistakes and create a very small phase difference that makes the sound wider. The plugins I'm using have stereo modes that allow separate processing of the left and right channels individually in the same plugin. If you're using a plugin that doesn't have stereo mode, just add tracks with multiple instances of your plugins. We'll start by moving the first recording to a separate track, mute it, and then record the second take.
Next, we will put the two recorded tracks as subtracks to the one with the plugins. In Reaper, this creates a bus where the output from the two tracks are sent to the parent. We pan the two tracks left and right and we switch all of the plugins to stereo mode. Let's hear the results. More punch and wider sound. Since the recordings we made are actually the direct signal from the guitar, we can easily change settings on the plugins and even switch between amps and camp impulses without having to re-record. Let's see what happens if we change the catharsis impulse for one made with a Marshall 1960 cab with V30s. We'll load this impulse to the cab and replicate the settings and have a listen. That is quite a difference. Let's try another amp. Lecto has a sibling called Hybrid that's a simulated Marshall amp. We'll add that and try it out on its low gain channel. Very different tone from the Lecto Catharsis combo, right? Next, we will switch the hybrid to its high gain channel and scoop the EQ a bit. This gives us more of an Iron Maiden style tone. Finally, what about a combination of hybrid and the catharsis impulse? So, these are some variations of tones. Again, I haven't really put any work into tweaking them. The next step would be to apply equalizers. Likely both at the beginning of the signal chain for pre-gain stage shaping, and at the end for fine-tuning your final tone. I won't do all of that in this video, but I'm sure you can find a lot of other videos telling you how to do that. Instead, as an example of a more elaborate guitar tone, I will load up a full song, a cover of a Mono Marx on a Sea of Blood that I made. For this song, 
I used a different amp sim, the TSE X50, that has the whole signal chain built into one plugin, but the philosophy is exactly the same. There are links for the free Lipu amps and X50 in the description of this video. I hope this video has helped you on your way to using amp sims. If you want me to make more videos, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel.